Hi guys, thanks for joining the Monday Live. Hi Ruby, hi Ruta, thank you for joining. Just waiting for everyone, I'm going to give everybody about a minute and then we get started. Did you guys have a good weekend? Anything interesting? You guys know if you're manifesting anything interesting, you're part of my group. Please send me an email. I'd like to celebrate you guys together. We had uh, an email on Friday. On Friday, I had like three major success stories. I had somebody who was manifested five grand a month, like just a few months ago, um, starting to get her first month at her job manifesting that. Then I had somebody um, manifesting the $2,000. And then I had somebody else. I, I don't even remember now the story, but I, I did a video about it. I think it was job related. Yeah, yeah. She got, she made a declaration in our group that she's going to get a job promotion, even though she only been on her job like four or five months. And she got the, a call from the CEO offering her a promotion. So, you know, we had a, we had a very nice strong end to last week. So if you guys had a similar story, let me know. I can't wait to talk about it. I can't wait to, um, you know, it, it's very inspirational when you do work as a group. And even if you don't work with our group, right? But you watch these lives, you benefit from this energy. Um, you know, if if you feel like you get benefit out of it, when something happens to you and you know it's tied to new concepts that you learned, do send me a note or leave, leave it on the Facebook group if you're part of the Facebook group so other people can be inspired. There's nothing better you can do for other people than give them inspiration that they can also do whatever it is you have achieved. They can also achieve and, and more so. In fact, this is one of the messages from the Bible, isn't it? You know, and uh, uh, Jesus said, these things that I can do, you can do them too, and you can do even greater things. So this week, I love Mondays. I don't know if you guys know that. I think I said that a few times. I love Mondays because Mondays is when you wake up and you set your mind right. I have, I have been given yet another week to achieve my goals, to get whatever it is I want to eat. It's, it's a fresh start for me, the Monday. That's how you have to think about the Monday as you're, as you, and people think the opposite, like, oh, Monday, I have to go to work, you know, and you get to wake up, you get to have a job, you get to go to work, smile, you're gonna have better times, but only if you're enjoying this, only if you're enjoying the current moment, people don't get that, it's so simple, right? If you don't enjoy the current moment, oh man, how can better come from that negative feeling you have inside of you? Um, I've been writing in my journal, my desire weight number, hoping to see movement soon. Okay, you you know for a fact that not just me, but other people in the group have manifested specific weights. Okay, now I've been able to hold it like at, at the exact number. And, you know, I don't have a story like this about another person who is able to hold it yet. But there's queens who have achieved a specific weight that they wrote down with, with our group energy. So I want you guys to believe this. The body is probably the easiest thing to manifest in a certain in a certain way. Because why? The body is, once you understand that you're detached from your body and you're not your body, the body is something you have, then it's all under your control, right? Unlike maybe a love relationship where your brain thinks, oh, but another person needs to participate. I need to convince another person to participate in this relationship or career where you're dependent on how other people view you. Your body is all up to you. I reached the first time during your life. Thank you so much for your work. Well, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. I'm glad you guys are deriving value from uh, from the videos. Um, you know, I'm I'm really happy to do this work for people. And to me, like I said, like my testimonials, my Facebook group. I did a live for my Facebook group this Saturday for the first time um, because I cut down. I'm I'm only doing two lives on TikTok right now, so I want to do one. You know, maybe every other week for my Facebook group on Saturdays. And the reason I decided to do that is, look, understanding the theory of these things is, is great, but people need practical advice on how to behave differently and how to handle different situations that arise based on the new concept that they have of themselves. And I talked about this during the Facebook Live. I'll just give a short example. There was a queen in our group who wrote to me and said, 
you know, this guy was treating me really, really well. And we met, like, when I started the challenge, I manifested him. He was one of my manifestations. I got him. And um, then all of a sudden, after, you know, wowing me, dining me and whining me, he asked me, can I contribute to the holiday that he invited me to go in? And I had a major yuck moment. What should I do? She's asking me. So sometimes people need this practical advice to to their manifestation yeah i raised my self-concept but this is what came up and what am i to do and the answer is you will have tests to test your new beliefs your new convictions about yourself right and the new beliefs you know, the universe will ask you or your subconscious will ask you, um, are you really this person who's so valuable? Are you really, you know, like, and <laughs> you have to decide in that moment, right? Because what happens to us when we face the unknown is the old us surfaces because the old us knows how to deal with, with situations that are unknown, right? They, they deal with it the same way they dealt with it for the last 30 years, for the last 40 years, 50 years, however old you are, right? So, is that new you going to arise to the situation to meet the unknown? Or is it the old you who's going to deal with that? So, you know, in this case, um, she handled it very well. We talked about it. She handled it very well. And she was able to um, stand firm in her belief of how she wants to be treated. And he, he actually apologized, you know. But maybe the old her would have been like, oh, you know, I either break up with him or I have to give in to this or... You know, what should I do? No, no, no. You're going to stand firm in whatever it is you want. And you're going to have, you're going to have all sorts of tests in all the areas of your life. Thank you, guys. Thank you for saying that um, you love my content. And th thank you. These messages are very encouraging. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, I want you guys to, to see how it applies to your own life, what you can take out of it. And how you can apply if you if you guys need some practical advice um either join my facebook group which is nominal like four bucks a month fee or you know if you if you don't want to do that just just leave me a comment or send me an email and if i if i feel like you know it would benefit the group i'm all about what benefits the group if i feel like it benefit the group i wouldn't be happy to talk about it right um remember with manifestation and we talked about the energy field a lot you manifest the information that has been ingrained in your energy field. And what has been ingrained in your energy field? Whatever has happened to you throughout your life and whatever has been internalized. Because we don't all internalize the same events. We don't all give the same meanings to the same events, right? So whatever is in your energetic field based on how you've internalized it, that is what manifests. So the process of manifestation is peeling back, first of all, assessing what's there, like what's residing here in my energy field. You have to be very, very aware. It's different things for different people. And then is there so much in here? For most people, it's a lot. Is there so much trauma? Is there so much limiting belief that nothing new can come and sit in my energetic field? Because if that's the case, if you're carrying this load, right, you can, you can, you know, think of money, visualize, think of love, think of marriage, look at wedding dresses all you want. But that new information cannot, there's no space. There's no space to sit here in order to manifest. First, it needs to sit in your energetic field. This information of, you know, me being married or me no longer being single or, you know, so if if there's no room for it because in here you have all those limiting beliefs you know men always cheat men are crap in order to not hurt you have to just take care of yourself and have a good life travel with your friends how how can in here be i am happily married and secretly i wish i was married and i wish there was somebody who really loved me a lot and like it, it has no space there's no space here right you can visualize all you want but while you hold these beliefs and you reinforce these beliefs well you know yeah, uh, clean your room to add stuff. That's that's exactly it. And by the way, you really should look at how your house and your rooms look like. Like you should always make your bed in the morning. These are the basics, right? The basic, the basics. Just because you want to give that information energetically that everything is set up. Everything that I don't need has been purged from my life. And now there's space. And you should do this physically with your physical space, with your room, with your house. You should do this energetically as well. 
please talk a bit about legacy or ancestral patterns. Can we manifest change for the entire soul group? This is this is a, a long, long discussion, right? And it's all about do you if this idea in your head is that you carry the karma and the trauma of past generations. Um, the game would not be that fair if we were to carry all of that, right? Or if we could not easily release it. If if you are here because in, in a bad life, let's say, because generations and generations before you have, I don't know, done something bad to other people, taken advantage of other people, and you're somehow paying for this karmic debt, then I don't think this is the way to approach this work. Then you can visualize and manifest whatever it is you want, but you can't, you're not really in control, right? You have to live life with the assumption that you have the free will to choose. So in my work, I always say this, there's God, there's the formless substance, and there's us. And God has created this formless substance in order for us to be able to access, to have power in the game, right? But it's a choice. It's a free will choice. And yes, we are given all a set of initial conditions with which we come into the world, right? Who our parents are, where we're born, from what resources we're born. These are all sets of initial conditions. And based on those initial conditions, those may be given based on karmic, but you should have the free will to access the formal substance and to say, this is my instruction for my future, right? And my future, set your future in the future, okay? Don't set it tomorrow. This, this is my instruction. This is the life I want. Between now and then, guide me on how I can get that life, right? Guide me on how I can get that life because I really want to live that life. And I, I really believe that no matter what your ancestors have done in the past, you have the free will to make this choice. This is what my whole work is based on. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a fair game. I don't think if no matter what you do, if no matter how you think, you can clear the past 15 generation of trauma. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, is there a karmic debt that has not been paid for some atrocities that have happened in the world, for sure. And is that spread, who knows if it's spread by family or it's spread by whoever soul you incarnated with, And but that might be some person from another country that you'll never meet. It is that karmic that spread, probably. But remember, you have the free will to choose. You have the free will to exit the, the game of the way, the set of initial conditions that you've been presented with. So I hope, I hope that answers your questions. Um, how do you handle if you have to be around someone who you don't trust energetically? Um, you don't trust energetically means you are reading their energy and you know there's something off about them. Guys, when you're sitting across from somebody and if you quiet the noise inside of you, you quiet everything, like everything, all, all your assumptions, all your, let's say you're on a date and you think, oh, I should really like this person because he's accomplished, he's tall, he's treating me well, he opened the car door, he brought me to this nice restaurant. But if you quiet all those, all that list, all those expectations, and you just sit there and sense what comes from him, the true, like we are all capable of reading the other person's energetic field. And this has happened to me. Has happened to me. I'm sitting across from somebody sometimes in like business or corporate or in an interview or on a date. And I know there's something off that no matter this person on paper is okay, but there's something off because I'm reading their energetic field. Right. And I always, always, always trust your intuition on, on those things. And just know this is the normal way to read somebody. The normal way to read somebody is not their resume. It's not sort of like this description that you have that they fit this mold, right? Because this mold is based on your conditioning. It's a mold you've developed. You're thinking about people. Yeah. But what you want is to now sit with your normal state of being able to see, is this an energetic match for me? And very, very honestly answer that for yourself, right? So how do you handle being around someone who you don't trust energetically? You 
don't want to be in that situation, number one. If you absolutely must be in that situation, um, let's say it's your boss, it's your minimizing the physical interaction that you have with them, what I mean, being in their presence, minimizing, leaving a certain space, like physical space, minimizing the phone calls, minimizing. But the idea is you have to move away from a person that makes you comfortable, uncomfortable energetically. You have to take every single step. And hopefully this person doesn't become, you know, your spouse or something, something tragic like this, your mother, you know, but um, every time you feel that and you don't listen to it and you don't take action towards it, you're actually training your intuition negatively. You're you're basically saying, no, I'm going to go with what my mind tells me this is the right thing to do, even though it doesn't feel good. I'm going to go. I have to go to this job. I have to be in this relationship. I have to. And so your intuition diminishes because our free will is like you can choose how you live your life, right? So this is diminishing. And so your power to manifest, to bring forth, to energetically create diminishes. Right. This is why most people are not able to manifest anything because they squash their intuition at every step of the way. Let's see what else we have. It's my mother-in-law. It always is. Minimize, minimize and also minimize um, the importance of her existence and the importance of her words. Right. Just say like she's an old lady. She's been through. I don't know how old she is, but she's been to the Vietnam or I don't know, right? And she thinks this way because of her own conditioning. But, you know, they're just words. It can't affect me. It has nothing to do with how I think about myself. And physically, do not be in her presence too much if it's possible. This is something I needed to hear. Uh, what do the emoji circle infinity mean? This is the name of our uh, group circle infinity the circle stands because we stand in an energetic circle we exchange energy with each other and in the middle of the circle we project our desires and we shoot them up into the universe the infinity means power we draw from the infinite power um let's see karmic that you like that yeah that's that's what i really think about karmic that okay let's talk about um some money limiting beliefs um because people always derive value from me talking about money and here's a limiting belief that's very very prevalent in society and you might recognize it in yourself if not just know that most people have this most people have been trained that they have to earn their existence for being on planet earth right because we need money to even have an existence you can't just go out there build a house on a piece of land and like people used to be doing you know a thousand years ago or whatever Hey, you can't do that, right? You have to earn your right. And they're being told as they're going through the schooling system, which jobs or which professions pay a certain amount of money, right? So they choose based on the lifestyle they want to have. Like, for example, if you want to earn 300 grand a year, you have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer, you have to, you, you sort of have that in mind. It doesn't matter if you're suited for that or if you like it, right? So what gets ingrained in most people's subconscious is in order to make a lot of money, to earn a lot of money, you have to do something you hate. And what happens to people when they wake up and they go to those jobs that they hate, even though they don't make a lot of money now, now it's in their subconscious and the collective subconscious is the fact that, hang on a second, I am supposed to hate my job, right? Because we're supposed to hate what we, this is, this is how we pay to exist. I have to pay with a portion of my life every day in order to exist on planet Earth. Okay, this this is where we're at mentality wise, right? You have to pay by doing something you hate. Let's think about this. So then all of a sudden, associating money with unhappiness is the norm, right? Because you get money from being unhappy, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, you know, even worse if your boss can message you at night. So when you start your manifestation work and when you start, you decide to have a different life and to bring forth something else and something creative, something you love to do. The first thing your brain is going to do is going to your subconscious going to be like, now I'm not going to have any money. Now I'm not going to have any money because 
now I'm chasing happiness. But money is obtained by doing something that makes me unhappy. You've trained your brain for that for the last 10 years, 20, how long, however long you've been working or, you know, being in school, understanding that, right? That you have to wake up and go to the office. So now as your brain is searching for happiness, money is associating with unhappiness. So money is actually hard to manifest for most people. Right. It's actually the, the step that's that's hard. And I know you see like some success stories, but there's like 10, 50, 100 success stories. Right. Well, as there should be so many, like once you you set your your mind to money, it should just it should just flow as, as a product of your happiness of waking up. You decided I'm going to do what I love and I'm happy. And so money should follow. Right. But I'm explaining to you why it doesn't automatically. And please sit with yourself and analyze yourself for this limiting belief. Right. Limiting belief that. Not only where does money come from, but do you have to effectuate a payment for your existence in this world? And does that payment have to do with doing something you don't like? Right. And maybe you like your job, but you hate waking up in the morning. Right. It's it, again, the association is I have to do something I don't want to do in order to get my finances up. You dropped me a note on Insta. Thank you. I'm going to check out your profile, King. Um, the symbols. OK, I want to see if I'm missing anything else. Yeah, the one about the money is is very, very important. OK, so if you've been manifesting money, haven't been able to manifest money, please make this association. Write it on the top of your page, every page that you write in the scripting. Money equals happiness. Money equals happiness and money equals happiness. What is this comment that I keep getting uh, translate? Um, are you a member of our group? But I don't think I've seen you before, but um, I'm not sure what you want me to translate, Queen. Let me know. Um, I just want to see what else I wanted to cover today. Um, we talked a lot about DSP and, and sort of relationships in my group. And, um, you know, I want you I want you guys to understand. I wrote some notes here from um, our discussion on Facebook, uh, which was more about the practical element of dating and everything um, and how how to behave differently. I want you guys to understand that if you're not over an ex, if you're not over somebody who's hurt you, this doesn't necessarily mean that you should be manifesting them specifically. And, you know, with, with the SP, I always say you always want to think that you want him or better. Right. But I now I want to explain the reason why you may still feel like you want your ex and your ex is your SP, even though, you know, he's treated you badly. I think, look, what it is, is when you end a relationship, whether he ends it or you end it, the relationship doesn't end when you socially end it. Right. The relationship ends when all the feeling has been consumed. And I want this to be very clear, whether that's a feeling of pain, whether that's a feeling of love, whatever feeling like socially, the relationship can end for other reasons. But until you have consumed that feeling, processed it through your energetic centers, the relationship does not end for you. That energetic connection does not end for you. And this is the reason why you may feel like you want your SP or your SP is like an X, right? So, sorry, let me just start my car because I'm beginning to sweat here. Okay. 12.25. Yeah, so so that's the take on the SP. The, the processing of feelings, remember... The game here on earth is about the evolution of consciousness. The evolution of consciousness is done through love and pain. That's how consciousness evolves. That's, those are the only ways that consciousness evolves. Okay, you must experience both in this life. And you must learn how to process both in this life like you must learn how to love unconditionally in this life you must love how to you must learn how to love with boundaries in your life you must learn all these ways in which to love to love the unfortunate to love to look at people who have more than you and 
learn to love them as opposed to resent them. It's the same thing with pain. There's all levels of pain. There's pain that comes from you putting yourself in a situation where you just, you just, it's not for you, but the reason you're there is because you didn't even understand who you are. So you're in that situation to learn the pain, to understand who you are, to understand that those circumstances are not for you and you should never go back there again. Get it? So, you know, when you're thinking of your ex, when you're SP, or it's sort of, what is it about love and pain that I need to learn from this interaction? And, you know, for me, for my own personal life, let's say you're, you're sitting there, you're contemplating, I want him or better, or I want a better version of him. Very few people actually want their ex, you know, that the same behavior, the ex who cheated, who goes to them, who, you know, they really just want something better. They, they call it a new version of him. But what they mean is like, I've learned this lesson now, and then now I'm ready for better. But you're not going to be given better unless you really learn this lesson. See, so listen to that again. You might be like, yeah, now I know how to handle. Do you really? Do you really? Or would you fall prey to the same thing all over again, either with him or with somebody else? If you have a pattern in relationships, it means it's something about love and pain. You're not learning. You're not processing. You're not allowing yourself to process. Haven't been in a relationship for a very long time. About to give up. Why? why is the important answer i know a lot of people are giving up and for some reason society not for some reason for obvious reasons society is trying to convince us all that it's so amazing being single retaining our freedom right because the more single people single people consume more they consume more they all have to work right more taxpayers beautiful it's beautiful for the system for you to be single um interesting take money equals happiness yes money equals happiness Ah, uh, money, money, money. Okay, I just want to make sure I, um, I've um i taken up everything. After a coffee meeting, I haven't received a text for four days. I removed the match. Was it too early? No. He has to get back to you within like 24 hours. Or he's a scratch. Remember online dating? Guys, online dating is like, you know, I'm, I'm engaged now, okay? To, to my SP and to the person that I love very much. If we met online, there's no other ways to meet people. It's our second time around for both of us, okay? But my approach to online dating, there was no hurtful elements for me because I really understood how to do this right, you know? And I've only had one date with a person that I communicated for three weeks and we had this nice banter and great chat and you know like so funny I had an emotional attachment and then you know I I met with him and he was just all his photos are fake he looked completely different he was like 20 years older and I realized this is not a person I can touch and in that moment I was like okay so this is not the approach to online dating talking to somebody that was the only experience that hurt me Right? So I was like, I, I can't, this has to be done another way. So the other way that I've done it was like, you chat with somebody for two, three days, max, max, okay? You see there is something to talk about. Um, you don't respond to messages, hey, sexy, hey, you look so good. You don't respond to those. Those are yuck, right? So if somebody has an intelligent comment about your profile, if they have more questions, if they say, I really like to learn more about you, obviously has to be an intelligent man. Then you say, would you would you be uh, willing to meet for coffee? That's what Irina's talking about. Would you be willing to meet for coffee to validate each other's profiles, making sure... Guys love this, by the way, because there's no financial investment for them. And by the way, for you, your time investment, your time has to be valuable. I don't need anyone's free meals. I don't need somebody to validate me with a free meal. So me, I don't know if I want to spend three hours with the strangers just to know that I would never like, you know, let him like kiss me, you know? So I need to see the person first. This has always been the natural order of things for the woman to see the guy in person, him asking her out in person. And she would respond based on, again, reading his energetic field, feeling a connection with him or not feeling a connection with him, right? So, um, you go on this coffee date immediately to, to see if there is, you know, do you look like your profile? Do you, do you, do you, you know, and this was my approach all along and it's been working perfectly. And Irina, not everyone after the coffee date, like, don't think you're for everyone. Do not define your value based on that. I've had like 20 coffee dates. This doesn't mean like 20 guys contacted me to be like, Hey, would you like to go out? Yeah. Like a lot of them did contact me. 
but not everyone but i don't think like you know from meeting someone over coffee i would be for everyone you know th this is the key is do not attach yourself energetically it's okay it's just a numbers game at that point you don't have a time investment he doesn't have a financial investment there's no investment to proceed if there is no no connection so stay strong do 20 of these coffee meetings you meet him a hundred percent guaranteed a hundred percent there'll be somebody but you're not for everyone i'm not for everyone that's fine it would be weird if like you know everyone i look at would just like all of a sudden start chasing me right wouldn't it it's awful I went to another tea park meeting and I got up after the first three minutes. Yeah, exactly. That, that's all a coffee meeting is for. Now imagine if you invested in a dinner date. Now you have to sit there, listen to him talk. You have to eat. Forget it. Forget it. Okay, you're, you, he's coming. Guaranteed. What else do you guys want me to talk about? The dating thing should be easy. If you do it right, it's easy. And it doesn't leave an energetic imprint in your heart, in your energy system. I'm talking about online dating, which is like... 90% of people meet via online dating nowadays, unless you're in school or something. Um, can you touch on using our three digit code? I tried it a few times, but I think I either failed or missed. Okay. So the three digit code, um, King, make sure it's not a number that's pertinent to you. It's, it has to be a random number. It has to be completely random. That has nothing to do with your life. It's not your birthday. It's nothing. You haven't seen it before. It's not your childhood number. It's not your house number. So you're going to sit with yourself in a clearing meditation in a, and just basically speak to the universe, to the formless substance, to the infinite intelligence, to God, whatever it is your religious beliefs are, and say, I want to communicate with you. I want to communicate with you and I'm going to use this technique. The technique will be like, I want you to say yes for by showing me this code. Let's say it's uh, 258. When I see 258, I know you've said yes to me. When I don't, within the same day, that means the answer is no. But first, please acknowledge me. Acknowledge me two times in one day. So the first time you see your code, you're going to say, thank you for acknowledging me. Now, please show me that indeed this is you acknowledging me is my name, Mona, right? And I would have to see it the same day. Before you use it the first time, you have to see it two times in one day. Everyone in my group who's using it has gotten that first confirmation of using it. And then they've been using it successfully ever since. And so have I. And, and by the way, you're going to see this number. Your question was, how come I haven't seen it? So I'm suggesting you probably haven't sat with yourself in meditation and say, no, you must acknowledge me. I want to communicate with you. I want to have direct input from you that I'm on the right track and never ever use it for fortune telling questions, right? Never use it like, oh, will me and John get married? No, you can ask, is John a great person for me to, should I continue with John? That's a different question. That's not a fortune telling question that you're asking for guidance. But the key is you have to take the answer that comes. Right, so many times, just like we draw cards or we do tarot, I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. But just how we do that, but we do it until we get the answer we want. If we get a bad card, we put it back. We take other cards, right? Don't do this with a three-digit code because you're gonna ruin it. So be prepared for any answer and act on that answer. If it said yes, do it. If it said no, you gotta drop it. This is, this is actually where it gets, you know, a lot. Of, you gotta be prepared. If it says. Do not proceed to Jennifer. You got to drop her. And are you prepared to do that if the universe says that? Guys, please don't call me. I don't take calls during my life. I got the inspired thought to ask a friend to set me up on a blind date. Sure, that's the same thing as, you know, you go in like casually, casually, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, do, do the three digit code is fun. What should I do to manifest marriage? Note, I don't have an SP. It's better if you don't have an SP. Because then you're not... It's not about manifesting or, you know, enslaving another's consciousness and trying to, you know, manifest him to behave a certain way. It's better. In order to manifest marriage. So first of all, are you part of our group? You should do the 60-day challenge. The cost is symbolic. You should do it. And in your life and images, in my... Um, the challenge you should put photos that represent you being married okay now this this 
spreadsheet that I've designed, it has, it should be your only mode of practice during the 60 day. Okay. Cause you don't want your energy to be scattered in all sorts of vision boards and it's all do it all together as you're doing the affirmations on each row. You're matching the images, you're matching the 3d responses, you're matching the dreams. Okay. And the only other tool you might want to use is a journal, like a plain journal to script ideas from your affirmation. So if my affirmation is my husband loves me, right? Or I am married to a wonderful man who takes care of me. Now I'm going to take my journal and I'm going to expand on that idea. If that was my affirmation of the day. And by the way, the affirmations should come to you every day. You shouldn't populate the affirmations for all the 60 days and just read them because you have to put new inspired thought every day. So if my affirmation is I am married to a man who adores me. Now I'm going to take my book and be like, I am married to a man who adores me. He wakes me up every day with kisses. He leaves me loves notes. He's such a provider for me and my family. He's, do, do you see what I mean? So I'm expanding on the same idea and the same thing for other areas of your life. If it's your body, like I'm, you know, you guys know I set my weight to 126.6. I'm 126.6. I'm glowing with vitality. I wake up with energy. Every time I look at the scale, I'm 126.6. Like I'm just keep going on the same line of thought. And this is all you should be doing for the 60 day challenge that we're doing because you're reprogramming. You're reprogramming your brain now and you're reinforcing these thoughts. And you're also keeping track both of what your subconscious says. A lot of people have very bad dreams when they start this work because their subconscious bringing up all the limiting beliefs that they've that are against these affirmations. And you should also keep track what happens in 3D that's out of the ordinary. Let's see. Any advice about a difficult long-term relationship? Get out of the difficult long-term relationship. You deserve better. Um, this is, I don't, I don't want to sound cliche, but we get what we accept and Angie it might be time for you to take time for Angie to reprogram her mind for her to attract better. And maybe this better will be him, but it will be him or better. By the way, a lot of the Queens in my group did break up their existing relationships because they just couldn't stand them anymore as they're doing this work that they're adored and loved and wanted this man's behavior being the same as always they just got the major yuck feeling from these people cut your losses never think oh i have like five years invested first of all if you're single guys do not do five-year relationships okay unless you're like 20 years old you do not do five-year relationships after the first year, you should have an inkling, is this relationship going towards, you know, spousal commitment, whether it's marriage or whatever that looks like to you, but is it going towards there? If not, I'm out. Yeah, and I'm not saying you need to be engaged within the first year, but I'm saying in the first year, you have to be sure that that's what you both want or there's no point. If you're just paying the rent together, that's not a long-term relationship. Let's see. Yeah, this is not my reality. You like that? Yeah. Um, only about you. And the SP will automatically be drawn into your energetic field. See, when I was doing that work, I, I always affirmed him or better. Like with his qualities or better. Right? Now, it happened to be him coming back with better qualities. But it was never like, I must have John Smith. John Smith is my husband. It was never like this. This is why I'm against that. It's, it's probably not going to work. Or if it works, you know, like it worked for people. It says, ah, oh, but my whisper method worked. Every time I whisper in his ear, he comes back, but then he always leaves me. Yeah. You guys know why that is, right? Is manifestation okay if you're a Christian? Why wouldn't it be? Wasn't Jesus a manifester? Didn't he take energy and put it into matter? Didn't he say all these things I can do, you can do? And even greater things you shall do? What does that mean? Let's see. Okay, I just want to make sure that um, I got to all the comments. Yeah, my workshop, um, which is called the 60 day challenge includes body, money, career and relationships. Now notice I'm not tying money to the career. 
because like I talked about, I want to eliminate all the limiting beliefs about money, such as even the fact that it necessarily has to come from a career. I want you guys for the career to focus on this is what I love to do. This is the type of people I love to interact with. This is what I would like to do on my everyday. This is what I want my schedule to be and the money to be like a separate thing. Anything to overcome feeling of being told to find a relationship? Read the stats, first of all. It is factual. More, more people in their 60s right now are finding committing relationships. Uh, you look much younger than that in these tiny photos that I see, but it has nothing to do with, do you know what I mean? Unless you want a 20 year old and you're 65 years old, then you might be a bit difficult. But if you have, you know, if, if, you, if you know, like you're valuable at any age. Like it has the age has nothing to do with it. Oh, you're 30. <laughs> okay. What are you talking about? You're too old. What are you? This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay. I want you to work on, on self-concept. It's not, it's not the age that's the problem. Who told you too old? 30. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I know. She's too young. What is she talking about? <laughs> too funny too funny you guys are too funny you know let's see let me see what else i i wanted to I, so i want to leave you with um i want i did a video this weekend on the five levels I, if you haven't watched it please watch it five levels of manifestation and the five levels of manifestation that i describe in this video is level one do it in 3d you know the how you know, you want an ice cream, you go to the store, you get an ice cream. Level two, you attract similar thoughts and you create like a sort of an energetic group that propels you forward. And you know, this is like birds before landing. Like somebody calls you up and says, do you want to get an ice cream with me? You know, but still the ice cream hasn't come. Number three, somebody just brings you an ice cream, gives you an ice cream. You're in a store, um, somebody's handing out ice creams, um, as samples. And that's, you know, your manifestation coming you're the right place, right? Circumstance level four, quantum jumping, obvious quantum jumping, whether, you know, like you look in the freezer, ah, there's the ice cream, but you looked before five minutes ago and wasn't there. And then level five, where you can just materialize what you want, like an ice cream. And I asked you guys to comment, where do you think you're at? Ideally, I love to be level three and four. I don't want to be at level five because I like to live in 3D and in a normal life. I don't want all of a sudden to, you know, think of things and they materialize right in front of me. And that requires a major, major control of, of thoughts, right? Because what if you think of something bad and it materializes? And uh, level level three and four is good. Watch the video if you don't know what I'm talking about. But many people reply to me um, to, to this video. Like it has a lot of comments with people who are able to be at higher levels when they were kids or younger. And then, you know, it's kind of like gone away. So somebody says, I needed money and suddenly the car seat I bought four years ago was being recalled and they pay me $500 back. You never know the how at this level. So, okay, only at level one, you know the how. Um, somebody else says, I'm at level two to four and I think um, I had one where I was at level five. I wanted to buy candy when I was a kid and suddenly a coin literally fell from the sky onto my head. I've had that happen with a $20 bill one time. I needed exactly $20. I was in university, I was walking with my friend. We're like, it would be nice to have like, you know, like I, I don't I don't really have, I only have 10 bucks. She only had like five bucks. We wanted to get some lunch at the cafe. I'm like, ah, we don't have. And then all of a sudden we look and it was like fall and a $20 bill literally just flies through the air. We're like, where's this gonna land, right? It, it was crazy, but that was like a level five manifestation that I've had. Um, so that, that does happen. Um, I've had level four get happen so many times before I needed an embroidery needle. One shows up with a thread attached on the ground in a grocery store parking lot by my car door. <laughs> so it, it's just so random. It's so funny. Um, somebody else says as a, as a child, I was always level five. I lost all sense of self, all abilities went out the windows. And he, he's saying, I'm trying to claw myself back to some sort of level one. Even life takes from us. If you let it like takes from us, if you let it, if you think back and you've had disabilities, you still are allowed to claim them back. This is the point I want to make. Okay. You, you have the right something like that happened to me bank told me to take a week to get my ten thousand dollars i i laugh and got it the next day yeah 
many times many people have this thing with time where you know 3d tells you how long it's going to take but you know for a fact it's going to take a lot less for you and it does you know whether it's you know being called to a job interview or you know you send your resume you get a call like 10 minutes later just because it happened to be in someone's inbox right away or um th things like this have happened to me and people that i know as well um somebody put an interesting comment about time it said um hold on a second Hey Mona, I realized a few times that I just went back in time. My friend asked me for the time. I look at my phone, it was 17.45 and it showed it to her. A little bit later, I look at my phone again, it was 17.44. This has happened to me. I'm reading this because this has happened to me as well. When I look at the time and I notice the time, but I kind of like, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm late or what have you. And then when I look again, it's a, it's a totally different time. If anybody else has experienced this with the clock specifically, let me know. I'd be interested to know. Somebody else says, I'm at level two to three, I think manifesting money and I got a dis decent amount out of nowhere a week or so. That's where I want, I want you guys to be. I want you to, guys to be like two, three or four, okay? But ideally three or four with, with all areas of your life. But give it a reasonable amount of time. Don't say, I want to be married by next week. Your brain will just shut down. You won't be able to manifest anything. Um, somebody else says, my mom is at level five, but she's very negative. She materializes bad weather accidents and all sorts of concerns that she speaks about out loud. Yes. So by the way, just because you're at a high level doesn't mean it's always going to be positive, right? What manifest, I told you guys what manifest, especially if you have the powers, right? Whatever is in your energetic field, you can make it positive or negative. This is why the more power you know you have, the more in control of your thoughts you have to be. It's your responsibility. Yeah, you did that, the negative. Yeah, it, the negative manifests easier than the positive. We talked about this a few times, guys. Why does the, why does the negative manifest easier than the positive? I, I, want, I want to make sure everybody knows and is aware. Every time you have a negative thought, you have to remember this. Why does the negative manifest easier than the positive? Anybody? We talked about this a few times. Nobody. Irina, anybody? No limiting beliefs on it. Yeah, but my theory is because it's strongly aligned with collective consciousness. Yeah. Collective consciousness is negative. You know, Murphy's Law, collective consciousness operates on Murphy's Law. If something can go wrong, anything at all, it will. But that's what they tell you. you can have everything, money doesn't grow on trees, all, all, this, all this collective consciousness beliefs. It's immediately, when you have a negative thought, you're aligned with a lot of energy that thinks the same way. And then boom, you get it faster. <laughs> faster for you guys who want to manifest something quick fast fast but something positive right what do you do you gotta align with similar positive thoughts you gotta find you gotta consciously align yourself with a group of people with an energetic pool that's aligned that you know when you make a declaration like in my facebook group we make a declaration you know everybody in the group is supportive of that declaration whatever it is i'm you know getting married by december 31st whatever it is you need to align yourself with that guys if you're doing this work do not talk to anybody about this work about what you're manifesting do not be, go to your friends and be like i found this manifestation thing and now I'm manifesting one two three and four they might entertain you they might humor you and be like yeah yeah oh, I'm, I'm sure you will honey and then you know just their disbelief if there's especially if there's more than one of them just their disbelief will completely negate you know because their disbelief is aligned with collective consciousness that that wave of disbelief will completely wash wash away your uh, positive intention I'm trying to teach my kids all this. You got to start early with kids. I have a couple of videos with kids and I will make a playlist with, for kids or for parents of kids rather because kids shouldn't be on TikTok watching these. But um, I definitely, you, know, you should teach your kids this. No negative energy around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, really, it's really like socially, if you can work on one 
thing in your life is clear your environment of any negativity that you can my son is three i want to start teaching him i did i have a video not many videos um ago maybe like five or six video and says how to teach manifestation to kids or i put it on my instagram it's more more um prominently displayed there okay for anybody under seven do the mirror thing that i'm describing there you have to teach them you have to they'll have such an easier time in the world just being understanding these principles does a messy room block manifestation yes anything in your 3d has an effect on your perception your brain and ultimately your view of yourself because if you have a messy room you don't even see yourself able to control a small environment right even this environment you can't even bring yourself to clean you can't even bring yourself to put order in so how could you how could your brain possibly believe that it could affect a larger picture if you can't even handle this space why manifesting a big house like you can't handle you know a, a, i don't know 10 feet by 10 feet you're not going to be given more you're only given as much as you can handle I was with a three-year-old, she picked up a doggy bag, she said it was her money bag. She found a bill on the ground a few minutes later in the walk. <laughs> Kids can do that. Kids can do, my God, if you encourage them a little bit, they can manifest incredible things. They can manifest for you, you know? Don't, don't use your children, but do you know what I'm saying? All right, guys, I gotta go. Um, let's put our hands together for the three, oh, I posted a very powerful manifestation technique. I just posted it before I started this live. I want you guys to go back and do this exercise. It's an exercise and I want you to do it. It's about alignment of the three centers, visual, speech, and heart. I want everybody to watch it and do it. Um, I'm on day 34 of the challenge and I manifested my dream apartment and an abundant mindset. We have people who manifested apartments, cars, um, I had my first story of somebody manifesting $2,000 because I put a $2,000 challenge. Um, put your hands together for the I am a winner. If you guys don't know me, I do the I am a winner 369 tapping. And look, we are at 69 viewers on, on the line. If you don't want to do this with us, you can drop the live. I'll be back on TikTok on um, Thursday, Thursday night. And I'll announce it on a Facebook when else I'm doing a, um, a Facebook group live. Put our hands together. I am a winner. 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 I am a winner.